Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back for another edition of Investor Stories. On this special segment, the experts describe the most important lesson that they've learned and how that has changed the way they invest. This is the special segment called Lessons Learned. On today's special segment, we have Jim Tannenbaum of Foresight Capital. Jim, can you tell us a story highlighting a critical lesson that has changed the way you invest? So I'm wired, I guess, as an entrepreneur. I think there is a definite difference between being an entrepreneur, an investor, and an entrepreneurial investor. And early in my career as an entrepreneur, you tend to be more entrepreneur-like as, as you think of investing. And at the end of the day, that really means that if you can't, at least for me, it, it meant that if I couldn't see my way through solving a problem that I was more skeptical of a really competent person spending 100% of their time solving the exact same problem. And the fact is that a you know, great entrepreneur that is spending 100% of their energy trying to solve something is going to be a lot better at figuring that out than an investor spending 5% of their time doing it. And so there, there have been a few cases where you know we really missed out on great product ideas that were doable by best-in-class people. And then the flip side of that is as an investor, I think our primary role is to find great companies, find great entrepreneurs and management teams, and be as supportive as we possibly can with them. And so as I was you know, self-reflective, and I think that the biggest mistake you can make as an investor is missing those very big things that are right in front of you. That's much worse than making a stupid investment in, in my <laughs> mind, right? You know, you know, I beat myself up over it. You get self-reflective and, and then you realize, okay, our role as an investor is to find the great ones, help them be as amazing as they can be and not to play Monday morning quarterback. It's tough in this business. Yeah. On today's special segment, we have Brian Asher of Venrock. Brian, can you tell us a story highlighting a critical lesson that has changed the way you invest? Well, I think it gets back a little bit to the to the anti portfolio story, which is, you know, never don't talk yourself out of a force of nature founder. And force of nature founders are rare. Uh, what we mean when we when we use those words are someone is who is not only really compelling. And, and energetic and willing to walk through walls. Those are all the characteristics you think of uh, with a typical entrepreneur. But they also have a level, level of credibility and transparency and ability to, and the confidence to see and admit the problems that they're facing, kind of back to that healthy board dynamic. Yep. Like people who can hold those two somewhat opposing personality types together and exhibit both of them, that's a force of nature. And, you know, when you meet that person, the rare, rare individual, you really don't want to talk yourself out of their idea (laughs) because, you know, because of nits or nats. Like we can all think of a million things that could go wrong, but that force of nature is probably going to make you feel really good uh, when you're discussing all those challenges. And, And that's the signal to say, hold on here. There's probably something I'm not seeing, and I need to spend a lot more time on this. Don't underestimate the market size, Brian, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or don't worry about the market size and, and, and assume that they're going to find the next market. <laughs> yeah, right. On today's special segment, we have Tehi Nam of Storm Ventures. Tehi, can you tell us a story highlighting a critical lesson that has changed the way you invest? Yeah, there's uh, been many. I guess the biggest is, uh, so when I was being CEO of Airspace, we also had outside investors at that time. And I, I would spend a lot of time with the outside investors. And so here I was, a partner of Storm, but also CEO of Airspace. I actually presented at Airspace at another firm's LP meeting, you know, because there were investors in Airspace. So 
got a chance to really work with other investors as a CEO. And on one hand, I realized that investors can be a huge tax in terms of the information request. I mean, just the amount of time you have to spend to update and so forth. But on the other hand, you know, I realized that just like me at the time, their jobs are on the line and they're measured by their investments. And so it was important for me to try to how to make them successful while at the same time not being an undue tax on the company. And so I take that and realize, you know, hey, if I'm an investor in the company, then it's a question of how do I help without being that undue tax. And what have you arrived at? How do you sort of pull back on whether it's requests that may hinder the uh, founder? Right. So I ask myself, is this something that I feel like it should just become part of their standard management meeting? You know, because sometimes we work with first time founders who really don't have a good sales dashboard or a pipeline dashboard or something like that. Right. So in those kind of situations, if we ask them to create it for us, I know in essence, they should start using it on a weekly basis or something like that. Mm -hmm. So those kind of requests, we just push hard. We put together, for example, a standard board deck. In the context of a board meeting, it's really just standard management reporting, which is good practice. So that's that. Um, if it's special reporting just for us that we feel like that's not going to be part of their the standard management, then we really that goes through a much higher filter and saying, do we really need it? Got it. Got it. Yeah, I've, personally, I've found that there's a big difference between working with founders that are first-timers, true first-timers, founders that maybe aren't first-timers, they've had a successful exit but never taken yes. venture before, and founders that have taken venture before, right? There's a yes. big difference in all three of those sort of yes. profiles. and Exactly. Um, requires a different level of engagement for sure. Yes, and also just how to educate, Right. Right. How to educate and help without being attacked. Right. It's a good lesson. That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five-star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, Go to fullratchet.net and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, overprepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me.